and I'm going to get my sign from his surgery location and I think I crazy glued it to the dryer. I'm Mike Dimas and this is Pinball Shenanigans. Okay, I thought I would do a little Batman 66 update uh, in regards to my experience with it in the last couple days. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So far, I'm enjoying the gameplay and the code. It's great. Um, nothing to complain about there. I do find the left orbit. It's a bit clunky, and I don't know if it's because this part here, like if you hit the ball into the side rail and it bounces into that. It's a little bit of a clunky shot, but you know, that's my only complaint thus far. So what I did notice when play testing it for the first times is that this slingshot kicker, when it fired, it was just very slowly going back to its resting place. This one did not have that issue. So I thought, well, maybe did the coil heat up and the plunger kind of get a little bit stuck in there. So I went under the play field and uh, investigated. And this is what I found. So I took the whole slingshot assembly off, just these two screws here. And then this nut right there so I could access the whole thing. And it wasn't an alignment issue, it wasn't a coil getting heated up issue. Uh, it ended up just being a bunch of like grease on the pivot point. I don't know if that's factory or not. Um, let's see if we can see if there's any on this slingshot. This is very awkward. Where is it? Right here. So, do we see any grease there? Yeah, see, there's a little bit of grease there. So I guess that is a factory thing, but over time, it just gets gummed up with coil dust, and I'm probably gonna have to do the same treatment on that guy, but for now, it's fine. Uh, and then I just cleaned the crap out of this, and that was back in action. Both slingshots were not very sensitive either, so I adjusted all four uh, switches on that. So, and then I went to uh, put the play field down and don't even know what I was doing, but I just reached in this direction and broke my little sign off. So here's the little sign. It's just a flimsy little piece of plastic. It's currently under surgery. Uh, it's got a little plastic base and it, the stem just sticks into the hole and then yeah, you know, not the most complicated or beefy design. Uh, this also reminds me that Mark Valuk, good eye brother, he noticed that there was a screw on the speaker. And I went to check, sure enough, it was there. And I also found my other piece of uh, my sign, so I can glue the front piece back onto that as well, and then that should be back in action. So now I gotta find out where this screw belongs. I did mention in the last video that I found a screw in the cabinet or in the coin box and it turned out to be this guy here. So I found a home for that guy. I put uh, Loctite on that so that should be nice and solid now. But when the ball does go up this ramp it does smash into this on a regular basis. So I'm thinking of mounting it up a little bit higher just so the ball doesn't smash into it so regularly. I should be able to do that by extending this spacer here, or I don't know, I'll figure something out. All right, so the next issue I had with the machine is I was just playing it, shot the ball. I was in a multi-ball, I believe, and I shot the ball into the gadget target, the last lit one, and the machine said slam tilt, and then it decided to uh, shut down and power up again so it was like a game reset and I thought well what the hell did I do is it like a glitch in the code is it me installing the code incorrectly 
WTF, right? Your new $20,000 friggin' toy is crashing on you. That is never good. So I posted on Pinball Repair Group and found that it is a known issue. Check this out. Shaker motor filter kit. So if you um, read closely, you'll see eliminates mysterious slam tilt switch activation during gameplay in machines with shaker motors. So I'm guessing that hitting the last target and gadget completed the word and the shaker motor must have went off at that point and that is the exact moment that my machine did the mysterious slam tilt thing. Okay, just for fun, let's test this theory. Let's see if the shaker motor does in fact go off if you complete the word gadget. I'm pretty sure it was E was the last letter I hit. Ah, it didn't that time. But again, I think I was in a multi-ball, so maybe it activated that time. Either way, it doesn't matter. So then the further I looked into it, I found out that there are actually a few different service bulletins for this uh, this system here. This is Spike 2. Spike 1 is modern sterns with DMD and node boards. Spike 2 is node boards and LCD. Uh, so, node board stabilization kit for Batman on all models. Um, the stabilization kit is literally a little tiny spacer and a zip tie. You kind of stick it between, uh, it's very elaborate instructions, between two transistors and zip tie it together. It stabilizes the transistor, basically. And yeah, there you go. Zip tie fix. Thank you, Stern. <laughs> And by the way, I reached out to the distributor and they said that they're going to charge me 85 cents for that kit if I want to go ahead with it. I probably have a spacer and a zip tie laying around, but I also need this service bulletin, capacitor service kit. Um, if you don't have the capacitor installed on your node board 8 or 9, then this is required for all these games. It, the symptom is false switch activations during gameplay and it causes electrical noise on the 48 volt power source, which I believe is the same issue that happens with the shaker motor. It causes noise on this 48 volt line. Uh, so that looks like this, and that just kind of like plugs into one of those two node boards. I think you need it on one or the other if you don't have a capacitor on these node boards. So the distributor says that if I want this, then it's gonna be like, I don't know, 14.95 or something plus shipping. I don't know, I just thought that Stern for any service bulletin type things would kind of cover that, you know? Cause it's basically badly manufactured and they found that out after the fact. So why wouldn't they just cough up the dough for that you know not the cost obviously it's just the principle so three different service bulletins i need and i posted that in the pinball repair help group and a local shenanigander by the name of chris kiss said look what i got it came with his godzilla but he doesn't need it because his has the capacitor on the um node board there so uh he gave this to me so thanks chris i appreciate that i just went and picked that up tonight checked out his austin powers and his godzilla very both very modded out and pretty sweet played a game on each so at the very least i've got one of the three service bulletins i can apply tonight and then not have to worry about the shaker motor causing random slam tilts and then i can deal with the other two service bulletins however, through the distributor or call stern or whatever. But I'm gonna plug this in and uh, let's see how that goes. All right, so I mean, 
looks pretty simple, but what do they have? Like nine lines, uh, oh no, four lines there. Seven lines of instructions. Basically, looks like you unplug this bottom right guy, pop that guy in. So I already unplugged this guy. So let's see, can only go in one way. And then this can only go in one way. And that's basically it. And then you can just kind of like tidy up the wiring a bit, but that's all it is. They just didn't install this capacitor on the node board itself until later runs. And you can see right in this corner, that's where the um, capacitors are on the newer version. Does it show it here? No, it doesn't show it on the paperwork, but... So that's done. I'll tidy that up a little bit. And then I do see a couple capacitors here and here on this node board. But is that the correct ones? And I also see here and here. So I'll have to research a little bit further to see if those are the correct ones or if I need that service bulletin. But uh, that is what's been going on lately with the Batman 66. Two things I need to do are to finish fixing my sign and try and find a home for that screw. All right, surgery on this uh, sign continues. I gotta find a home for that screw. And I also tidied up the node board thing to look just like the photo. How about that? Okay, here's my little fix that I just am attempting here for this uh, ramp plastic. I just remove this screw and the whole thing comes up. There was not a screw in the bottom of this post. I just added that. That gives it a little bit more height. And then when I screw it all back down together, I should be up a little bit higher. I don't know that that's gonna resolve the issue at all, but maybe it won't be smacking the underside as violently and causing screws to friggin' come loose out of the cat plastic. So that is my possible solution for that. Okay, so this is basically your node board stabilization kit. Like I said, it's a little spacer. You squeeze between these two transistors. Actually, I think this is technically a diode. And then you zip tie them together. Um, so I've dug into my little bin to try and find a spacer. Found one that was actually pretty much identical to this, which I may use for the other node board. Grabbed a zip tie and finagled it in there. Um, honestly, just trying to work in there and feed the zip tie through all three things at the same time put quite a bit of stress on the diode there, so honestly I could have done more damage than good uh, by trying to do that. It's a royal pain in the butt. Probably should have disconnected all these guys to give myself a little bit more room, and maybe I will do that, because I'm going to do this guy next. All right, node board stabilization kit installed on the second node board. That one was a little bit easier just because just the way that the board's positioned is better access. So if I screwed anything up, I'll notice when I turn on the machine because it will probably say node board not recognized. That one went pretty good, but this one I definitely felt like I mangled a little bit in the process. So uh, let's turn it on and pray. I better document this in case it's a fail. Hopefully not. In the meanwhile, I'm negotiating with someone. He wants to sell me like a ball bowler, a jukebox, 
an old EM pinball machine, actually two, an old flipperless wood rail, a candy machine, and um, pop, an old Pepsi machine. Uh, a lot of cool stuff, but I don't know, the price is kind of a little much, and I'm really a pinball guy. I, I, all this other stuff is really cool and would be fun, but let's we'll see if the, anything ever comes of that. I'd say we're in pretty good shape. I'll hit the start button to be sure. Start button. Uh, sometimes when I lift up the play field, I get a ball stuck in the trough jam position. I can't seem to ever find that for whatever reason. Okay, start button. Have the volume turned down. Okay, I didn't screw up the node boards, yay. So I'm gonna just check that other service bulletin and make sure, find out if I actually need to install the cap kit or not. Okay, I'm still trying to determine if I am missing the capacitor on the node boards and whether or not that service bulletin is required. So just waiting for those results I posted on Pinball Repair Group. And I'm going to get my sign from its surgery location. And I think I crazy glued it to the dryer. All right, disaster is averted. And my sign is back in action. But, you know, you just brush it on this thing and it's going to snap again. And I'm pretty sure that that will happen again. But for now, it's good to go. I don't know about the other um, service bulletin yet. But I think that's enough uh, tinkering for the night. I think it's time to actually play this thing. So, uh, if there's any more shenanigans going on with this thing... I will let you know, and I should do a gameplay video too at some point, so there you have it. Hopefully that was helpful. Okay, one last thing before uh, I go. Check out when I hit the right ramp here. Check that cat plastic. Let's see uh, if I can hit it in short order here. Here we go. Oh, the crane is in the way. Of course the crane's in the way. I don't know if you can see that, but here we go. Oh, missed. Here we go, coming up right now. Nope. Oh, and then I drain. Okay, take two, crane, F off. All right, here we go. This is very enthralling footage, I know. You're just at the edge of your seat. Here we go. Okay, earlier, no. Earlier, okay, here we go. No, earlier, okay, here, no. Oh my god, this is the worst footage ever. Okay, here we go for reels. Crane, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. I'm doing it anyway, I'm gonna sneak by that sucker. Oh, see that? It moved. But see that? It did not. And of course, Crane's in the way. Okay, so anyway, it is much better, so I'm happy with that.